Welcome to Soul Light Channel. Here, we explore extraordinary stories of people who have experienced death and return to share what they saw. We're a new channel, but we promise to bring you inspiring and high-quality content every day, helping you learn deep lessons about life beyond this existence. Before we get started, we invite you to subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and share this story with at least two Christian friends. Help us spread God's word, and your support will make a real difference. I've been a pastor almost my entire life, and my faith in Jesus has guided every decision and action I've made. Not long ago, I was transferred to a small town near Missouri after the old priest passed away. I thought it would be a chance to strengthen my mission, but little did I know that I was stepping into a real spiritual and physical battle. At first glance, the town seemed like any other small American town, a small church, a few houses, a school, and some local shops. But there was a darkness hanging over it. Gangs had taken over the lives of the people. The moment I arrived, I sensed that something was wrong. The people were intimidated, and the gangs controlled everything. Every day, I heard stories of crimes and violence. Though my faith in Jesus remained strong, I soon realized that my mission wouldn't be easy. Fear ruled the town and even the church had lost some of its strength. Still, I prayed every morning, asking God for the strength to help the community. One day, I heard about a man named Marcus Thompson, the leader of the most feared gang in town. People called him the boss, and he controlled everything, commerce, the police, and even some government officials. I knew I had a mission from God, so I promised myself I wouldn't be intimidated. Despite the gang's grip on the town, I continued with my duties, trying to bring people back to their faith. I organized community meetings to give young people and families a safe space away from the gang's influence. But many were too afraid to join, fearing retaliation. Then, one day, a man from Marcus's gang came to the church. With a forced smile, he said, Marcus wanted to meet me. I felt uneasy, but I agreed trusting that God would guide me. When I arrived at Marcus's headquarters, he greeted me with a cold smile. After a few minutes of small talk, he told me why he called me. He was getting married. He wanted me to officiate the wedding. At first, I didn't see anything wrong with this. After all, even criminals might seek redemption. But then I found out that Marcus was already married and had never gotten a divorce. I knew I couldn't officiate the wedding. Marriage is sacred and Jesus' teachings are clear. Anyone who marries a divorced person commits adultery. I informed Marcus of my decision and his smile disappeared. I calmly explained that I couldn't go against the Bible. He became angry and started making threats, saying I wasn't in a position to refuse him. He wanted what he wanted, no matter what the Bible said. Though I tried to stay calm, fear crept into my heart. That night, I prayed harder than ever, asking God for strength. I knew I couldn't give in to Marcus, but his threats weighed heavily on me. As I left the church, a group of hooded men attacked me. They beat me viciously, and one of them whispered in my ear, Marry Marcus, or next time, you won't be so lucky. I managed to call an ambulance before losing consciousness. When I woke up in the hospital, I was alive, but fear for my life was very real. After the attack, everything changed. I couldn't move freely around town anymore. Every sound, every glance, made me jump. I knew Marcus's men were watching me, and they might attack again if I refused to do what they wanted. Despite my fear, I kept praying, asking God to show me a way out. I tried to transfer to another town, but the process was slow. Meanwhile, the pressure to give in to Marcus grew stronger. I began to wonder if I should just officiate the wedding to avoid more trouble. But how could I? Jesus' words were clear. Marrying a divorced person was wrong. I couldn't betray my faith, even if it meant protecting my life. One night, as I was about to close the church, three men showed up at the door. One of them, with a scar on his cheek, said, The boss is getting married tomorrow. My heart pounded. I told them I couldn't go against my faith, but I knew my words wouldn't be enough. That night, I knelt in the chapel, 
praying with all my heart. I knew I was facing a critical decision. Give in and betray my faith, or stand firm and risk my life. After hours of prayer, I felt overwhelmed by fear. I saw no other way out. I had to officiate the wedding, even though it went against everything I believed in. The next day, I entered the church with a heavy heart. I performed the ceremony, but the words felt empty. I looked at Marcus and his bride, knowing I was committing a grave sin. When it was over, I went home, devastated. Guilt crushed me, and I knew I had to ask God for forgiveness. That night, I prayed again, tears streaming down my face. I had betrayed my faith, and the weight of my sin was unbearable. As I prayed, something extraordinary happened. I felt my body grow heavy, and suddenly, I was no longer in my chapel. I found myself in a place of despair and suffering. I was in hell. The air was hot, and the ground cracked with flames. Screams of torment echoed all around me. As I stood in this terrible place, I saw Jesus standing before me. His face was filled with sadness and compassion. I knelt before him trembling, asking for forgiveness. Jesus said to me, You were forced by circumstances, but you cannot ignore the consequences of your actions. Now you must see what happens when divine law is broken. He led me through the horrors of hell, showing me the souls of those who had sinned. In one cave, I saw the souls of people who had lived in lust, tormented by demons. In another, I saw those who had violated the sacred bond of marriage, trapped in endless suffering. These souls were condemned for breaking God's law, and their punishment was eternal. When I returned from this vision, I was shaken, but determined to change. I realized that I had to seek God's forgiveness and live in His truth, no matter the cost. From that day on, I vowed to never again let fear lead me away from my faith.